Norl opens with a default built-in session. For most people wanting to use Norl, all you would do now is connect your headphones to your computer, put them on your head, and then press the play button. If that's all you want to do, you can stop watching this tutorial now. Just know that you can find more sessions in the form of files called presets or schedules in Norl Speak on the Norl website and that you can save sessions to audio files to be listened to later without Norl. For example, to play a session on your MP3 player or cell phone, you'd go up to File, Export to Audio File. I think FLAC is the best because it's um, lossless. In other words, it compresses it but doesn't ruin the sound quality. Uh, that would be right here. And then just give it a file name. Whoops. Boom. And this thing will just plug away forever. And if you get sick of waiting for it, just hit stop. Uh, you've actually saved part of a file there. So that can be useful sometimes if you really don't want to get all 72 minutes. By the way, Norl's 72 minutes long simply because in the old days you'd normally put this on a CD and um, that's how long a CD can be. To move around Norl, by the way, in terms of time, you just click on this progress bar. So when I first hit play, it starts at the beginning. But if I just want to get right into a 3 hertz wave or something, I can just fast forward. I can check out little changes I've made, so forth. Um, a big thing is being made about isochronic tones these days. Um, whether or not you believe they're working or not, uh, one thing that would definitely be true is you don't need headphones to use them because they're not separated by stereo. Uh, to give you an example of how easy it would be to use the latest Norl to switch this to isochronic tones, just click on a voice right here by Norl Beat. Actually, let's get rid of the other one just to make things simple. Boom. I just got rid of the noise. Do you see how I did that? I'll show again later. By Norl Beat, I'm going to right click. By Norl Beat, just switch it to isochronic pulses. Bam. And if you notice, it's now doing a steady pulsing. I'll turn it up just in case it's not. Um, let's see, what else? So the x-axis here is always time, but the y-axis can refer to four different things. Let me hit stop here the bass frequency, the beat frequency, the volume, and stereo balance, which frankly normally should just be left flat for anything binaural, but there are times when you might want to vary it a little bit. The two most important are bass frequency and beat frequency. Many people have this confused, so this, if you get one thing out of this, I hope it's this. Bass frequency is almost arbitrary. As long as you can hear it and it's within the range where the literature says binaural beats are possible, which is, uh, geez, I, well, certainly above 40 hertz, right? Because that's the lowest range of our hearing, but below 1,000 hertz. As long as you hear it, you're in good shape. I'm going to switch this back to binaural beats, by the way, so that. Um, now, if I go over here to the beat frequency, this is where you actually create tones. Now, if I select all, see, so you've noticed by clicking here, I deselect everything. I can select everything by going like this, or I can just do Control A. Right clicking brings up a box where I can then set the beat frequency for everything. I'm going to set it to zero. Watch what happens. Now there's no pulsing, there's no beating at all because you essentially have absolutely eliminated the beat frequency but the bass frequency stays exactly the same. If I do control Z, that undoes what I just did, uh, the, it completely returns to its former self, but if you notice, the bass frequency has stayed the same. In terms of volume, literally by just pulling this down, I can make it quieter. Um, I can also move this to make it louder. I can change things in time using the sliders this way or that way. Um, Norl does the math for you, so you just don't need to mess around with setting up the beat frequency other than to pick what you want. Uh, I've seen at least one video where they've got this completely wrong. Um, for the hell of it, let's just get rid of this all together. Let's go new. I'm going to call this test, description, demo, 
um, author me. Boom. If you notice, that changes everything up here. Uh, this gives you pretty much nothing because it's only one second long and the bass frequency is at 40 hertz, which you can't even hear, and the beat frequency is at 1 hertz, which you would be able to hear if the beat frequency were high enough. In fact, I'll demonstrate that. Uh, let's change this. I've just selected all by doing a control A. Oh, one thing before I move ahead. Uh, the, first the first point is there. The last point is over here. They're actually the same point. I know that's confusing, but because normal can repeat, it's important that the beginning and the end are always at the same level. So in normal, they are the same thing. To create new points, you just double click anywhere within here. And you can pretty much be arbitrary with that. Uh, one trick I'm going to do right now is do Control A to select all, Control C to copy everything, and then Control V. And if I just keep doing Control V a whole bunch of times, look at the number of data points I'm creating right here. Now I'm going to do Control A one more time. See how now 176 are selected. Right clicking anywhere in this window brings up the dialog box. If I set the event duration to one second, all of a sudden there they all are. Now I'm looking at bass frequency. In terms of beat frequency, they're all exactly at, at uh, one hertz. The bass frequency is all over because this is the one I clicked all the dots in. Let me set all them to be the same too. Beat frequency, that'll be the bass frequency. Let's set that to 220. A. There we go. So if you see, they've all gone level. The beat frequency is all level. The volume, it's all level. Let's raise that volume a little bit. And um, let's see. I can also, by the way, use the arrows. It's a little quicker sometimes. And if I hit play, you can hear that. It's a one hertz cycle. By the way, you can bring the window up and down here in normal. I'm going to change this to isochronic simply because it's easier to hear for you. That's a one hertz isochronic beat. Now, if I, um, I can do some pretty tricky things. One is I can select by vo uh, voice here, I can do by interval. If I select every second one and then start using this thing to raise or lower them. By the way, if I use scale, it moves a little quicker too. Um, this is the stereo balance. If I invert the selection, I can bring the other half down. This is now bringing the isochronic beats. One's on the left, the next one's on the right. That's one way to create an alternating one, although there's also the option for that in here. It's called alt isochronic pulses. But anyway, um, if I go over here to the bass frequency, remember I've selected half of them here, so I'm, I'm actually going to just bring Let's see. Let me try this again here. Select by interval to... Yeah, there we go. So I've done something kind of just arbitrary there. If I do control Z, it gets rid of it. Um, you can see on the stereo that's alternating on this. Uh, again, if I select all, go back here, I can just reset everything by having the bass frequency be 220 again, the event duration 1, the beat frequency 1. There, everything's back to zero. Now, here's something pretty cool. Uh, if I go to this thing called magnetic pointer, I can now actually draw in points. Right now I'm in the bass frequency, so everything is... Uh, that's the only thing being affected by my drawing. Now, to give you an idea of how independent these things are, if I go to beat frequency, it's absolutely level, and I can come up with my own thing here. This can be very useful for sketching out a session if you just want to try something really quickly. There. So the bass and the beat frequency are completely independent. Um, another thing is if I want to create a new voice, I select a voice, I go duplicate selected voice, and boom, there it is. I'm going to change that one to binaural. And uh, here's one of the most important things. 
By clicking on the top of these boxes, you can mute stuff. And um, that was bad timing, wasn't it? I can mute one voice. I can mute both. I can do this by hitting this. It alternates all or off. That can be extremely useful if you've got dozens of voices. And in fact, for the heck of it, uh, let's try lowering the volume here really low and really do something nasty which is duplicate all voices and let's duplicate all voices again really stress the system here look at all these voices we now suddenly have in here yeah that's um so if I want to mute all of them at once, they're like that. Then I can just hear single one. What's even more powerful is this view feature. Right now I don't see any voices, but if I want to see just this one, by the way, I notice it's pretty important to click on the thing and then also hit view to make sure both are, are operating. Now whatever I do with that magnetic pointer here only affects one, just that voice. And actually right now I'm adjusting the volume, so it's getting a little out of control. Whoops, if that happens, control Z real quick, boom. That just undoes control Z. Control Z, by the way, only goes back one step, but 90% of the time, that's what you need to get back to wherever you were. Um, now, if I make that one disappear and do the next one, let's change its beat, fre beat frequency. Oh, by the way, they're all unselected now. If I try to do magnetic pointer now, nothing happens. Control A. you can already hear that now there's two voices. So one by one I can just mess around with, with different stuff. Uh, give you another idea what you can do. I can scale some portion. Um, I'm going to turn off the magnetic pointer now. That's important to remember because if you want to select points. And I'm going to change the scale now. That actually does it for all points but only within the selected range of these. And I can also go up, down, let's give a little more room in here. Yeah, already it's turning into something unwieldy and crazy. Maybe this will take you to Nirvana. Uh, other interesting things, you can uh, flip Y, for instance, bam, that's a great way to vary things. Oh, another thing is you can reverse entire voice, I'm going to make all of them visible again. Uh, select one voice, let's take this one, I can't even tell which one that is anymore, except if I go like that I can. If I reverse that, there. Uh, Norl has the ability to play audio files. It loops them. So if you put in a three-second sound of a bird tweeting or a wave or some wind, it'll keep looping that, which is a really nice feature. And all it is is changing a voice to something. So right now we have a binaural beat. You can choose isochronic, pink noise, but this audio file is the one. You choose the audio file. Um, let's just try this. It's an, I simply click OK. All of a sudden, you're hearing that as the music. Now, you still see all this binaural beat information, but that's actually useless, and so is the bass frequency, because there are no, there is no bass frequency or binaural beat associated with that music right there. I can add another voice that does, though. Like, let's take the pink, vo pink noise one and change that to binaural beat. The main problem now is that the volumes are really high, so if I very quickly, maybe you can follow me, I'm going to just change the volume of the audio file way down, and I'm going to now bring the volume of the pink noise way up. Actually, it's not pink noise anymore, it's binaural beat. And I need to also change its bass frequency, which is zero at the moment. Let's change that to 190, just arbitrarily. And now you hear it, and now let's change its beat frequency to 4. I tend to find that's a normal sort of meditative range. Now you can hear it. So what I've just done was added music to our binaural beat. And you can play around with those two volumes to balance which one's which. Um, anyway, I hope that's helpful.